there is a very hotly debated story uh, in the Bible concerning um, should uh, women be pastors in church? People have argued and given all sorts of uh, excuses and uh, you know explanations on this topic. Some are saying yes, others are saying no. But uh, do we ever care to see what exactly the Bible says and why it, it talked about this? Now, this is uh, I'm not. This is uh, one of the most hotly debated issues, of course, in the in the church today, and uh, it's not really. It's it's not a thing of uh, you, you know. People can be saying it's a thing of uh, it's a tussle. It's a who is better, men or women? You see now, if we if we argue on this basis, then we'll be off the Bible. If we argue on who is uh, you know better in one way or another, we'll be arguing out of uh, the way of the Bible. So this is basically a, an issue of biblical interpretation. So how we're we going to interpret this according to the Bible, if a, a woman should be a pastor in a church, should lead, you know, in the church. So let's interpret it in the most biblical way. And I, I want to give this first before I start to tell you that I'm not anything against women or uh, am I uh, having any personal issues with this. I'm just interpreting exactly what the bible uh, is saying because the bible tells us study to show thyself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth second timothy 2 15 so we have to study to make sure that you are approved by god and not uh, create our own ideas and then we say this is what uh, suits me and i'll go for it okay so let's study together and let's be able to see can women be pastors in church so first and foremost Let's see a verse here. There's a verse in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 34, which says, Paul says, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. Now, look at that word, as also says the law. There are people who can say, no, 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 you see, this is the Old Testament, you see, those were uh, part of the laws, those were part of the, you know, things of the law, now we are, we are in the church period. But remember, Paul is addressing both as it was in the time of the law, and also in the time of the church. If I tell you, uh, be here and also here, it means it is us it applies in both places so it's not something about the law only is also the time of the church and if they will learn anything <coughs> excuse me <coughs> if they will learn anything let them ask their husbands at home for it is a shame for women to speak in the church now you may ask yourself why is paul saying that is a shame for women to speak in the church why should they not speak? What would be the reason? And also we also see Paul again addressing the same, same issue to Timothy. Okay? He addresses the same to Timothy. Uh, Timothy 2 verses 11. See what Paul is saying. He's also talking about the same. He says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach. I suffer not a woman to teach or to unsup authority over the man, but to be in silence. Why, Paul, are you saying this? Why, why, why should a woman not, not be able to speak? It's not a tussle here, like I've told you. It's not a thing about who is smarter, who is better with gender. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about teaching, as the Bible says. Now, you have to understand one thing, that God assigns different roles to men and women in the church. And uh, this is how God created people. He, he created, God is a God of order, God is a God of plan, and is not the author of confusion. So he created an order of a certain way, how a man and a woman should be in his church, okay? Now, you have to remember one thing, you have to remember one thing, that uh, sin... Sin entered the world because of this particular disobedience. So we have a reason to talk about it. Okay, you remember Eve giving the, the fruit to Adam? The Bible says here, and, and Paul explains here, 
Look at what Paul says in verse 13. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Okay? And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in this transgression. Are you seeing who was in the transgression? And why? Why would have Eve been in transgression? Because she was deceived. So it means probably the deception could not have happened if it was the man who was, uh, you know, why? I, I think there's a reason why Satan went to the woman because a woman is it's always very emotional and they are, they, are, they, they are more of a helper and they listen more. And a man is a, a, a someone who works with a lot of facts. Let me see, let me hear, show me some proof, you see? And I think uh, because of this, soft part of the woman satan found a way to be able to attack humanity through the woman and i think that's why the bible is talking so much about a woman being in subjection okay chilling down and listening to exactly what uh, uh, uh you see the bible is saying concerning this now <clears throat> we have to check something else now, Paul restricts women from serving in roles of teaching or having spiritual authority over men. This definitely includes uh, being pastors, you know, being pastors and the pe uh, bishops in uh, public gatherings. Sometimes you'll find there are women who will go and they will try and be pastors in different places. And of course, you will always see things like this happening. And people are always arguing, come on, a woman should not be teaching because the Bible says so. And uh, you see, there are so many common objections and people say, no, 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 Keith, you can't tell us that. You can't say that. Come on. Come on. You can't say that... Uh, a woman cannot be a pastor. Like here in Kenya, we have so many. All these are Kenyan uh, pastors. Others are, you know, they're, they're leaders, prophets, prophetess, bishops, you know, and all, all, all those kind of things. They're, they're here and they're all over in the world. And there are people who have some common objections. And I'll give you a couple of objections which people try to say, no, 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 no you're not right. The Bible says that women can lead. Let me show you some of the objections. Now, objection number one is that uh, many people object this and they say that uh, maybe Paul was uh, saying this to Timothy, you know, in, the, uh, in the, the one that you have just read in the book of Timothy. Because uh, back in the days, in the first century, women were typically uneducated. In that time, women were not going to school. They were not uh, educated in different ways. And uh, men were always going out and, you know, learning how to do this and do this and do this. And uh, women were not having, did not have that kind of education. So some say it's because of that. But when you look very well in uh, 1 Timothy, the one that you have just read, there's nowhere where Paul is talking about the education status. But he's basically talking about deception. He's not talking about education. He's talking about deception. Remember one thing. If, if, uh, if education was a status for ministry, then majority of Jesus' uh, disciples would not have qualified if it was all about education. Because most, most of them were fishermen. They were just, uh, you know, poor people who don't know anything. So I don't think it was all about education. Another objection that people say, no, 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 don't tell us that. Maybe Paul was talking about this because uh, there was something which was happening in Ephesus where, you know, Timothy was, uh, he was uh, a pastor of the church in Ephesus. And uh, people say that Paul only restricted the women of Ephesus from teaching men because of something. Because Ephesus, Ephesus was known for its temple to Artemis, you know, the god of Artemis. And women were the authorities in that branch of paganism. They're the women were the ones who were, you know, authorities of, uh, you know, all this uh, pagan worship in that uh, Artemis. Therefore, the theory goes that... Um, 
Paul was only reacting against the female-led customs of the uh, Ephesian, uh, Ephesian idolaters, and the church needed to be different. That's what people say. No, no, no come on. It was just about because uh, back in that place there was idol worship and women were leading in the, you know, their authority in uh, that temple. However, if we check very well back again in Timothy, there is nowhere where Paul mentions Artemis, this, you know, uh, this uh, temple. Nor does Paul mention the standard practice of Artemis worshippers as a reason for restrictions. He doesn't mention anything like that. That is uh, argument number two, objection. But let me show you also another objection. People say, you see, you, you don't understand this, come on. You, you see, Paul is only referring to husbands and wives and not men in women and women in general. You see, there are people who can say, no, it's, it's all about husbands and wives. It's, it's not really about uh, men and women in general. He's talking about their husbands, uh, you know, this, this kind of... But uh, if we check very well, the Greek words for woman and man in uh, 1 Timothy 2, of course, where we've been reading, this could refer to husbands and wives. However, the basic meaning of the words is broader than that. The same Greek words are used in verses 8 and 10. Okay, Verses 8 and 10 is talking about the people in the church. Let's see verse 8 and 10. What does it say? I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. You see, this one is addressing men specifically. And in like manner also, the women adorn themselves in more modest apparel with um, shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, array. You see, God is also addressing men and women separately. So I don't think uh, it's basically about husbands and wives. It's something about the church. Another argument and objection that people have is uh, concerning Miriam, Deborah, and uh, Hulda. And, uh, you know, the women who have been uh, in, in positions of power in the Bible. You know, these are women who have held leadership positions in the Bible. Uh, Miriam, Deborah, Hulda. But this was in uh, the Old Testament. First, we have to understand. It's in the Old Testament. And it is true God chose them for a special service. Yes. And uh, they stand as models of faith, courage, and leadership, okay? However, the authority of women in the Old Testament is not relevant to the issue of pastors in the church. What kind of authority did they, they have? They had authority of a different thing. They were leaders, uh, 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 you know, uh, they were leaders in the country. They were not leaders in the church. You see, the church is very different from the nation of Israel. The church is a spiritual nation of Christ. And uh, Israel is a physical nation. Are you seeing that? There's a big difference between that. So if you argue on that angle, then uh, you'll not be making some sense. Let's see another argument. There's some people who argue also, and they say that... Uh, Concerning uh, Priscilla and Phoebe in uh, the New Testament, they say, you see, there was uh, Priscilla and Phoebe. And of course, uh, in Acts chapter 18, Priscilla and Achaia, Aquila, the husbands, they are presented as faithful ministers of Christ. And uh, Priscilla and Aquila, you see, Priscilla is mentioned first, perhaps in the Bible, indicating that she was more prominent in the ministry than her husband. And uh, both of them, they shared the gospel to Apollos, you remember? And explained to him the way of God more adequately. If you want, you can read uh, Acts 18.26. When uh, Apollos did not really understand how people are saved, he was still talking about the, the salvation by, uh, you know, uh, the, the baptism of uh, John the Baptist, you know? He, he thought that's how people will be saved. He was passionate, but he did not understand. And uh, of course we see, we see that uh, they shared to him, they took him to, to, to their home and shared to him about the gospel. 
the gospel of grace. And uh, we see this lady Priscilla, she's mentioned more. So it means she was, uh, you know, uh, she was more vocal. But uh, if we check very well this story of uh, Priscilla and Aquila, we see there is nowhere where the Bible mentions that Priscilla pastored a church or she was teaching publicly or became a spiritual leader of a congregation of saints. There is nowhere we see that. That's another argument. So let's see another argument also. There are people who talk about uh, Phoebe. Phoebe in, uh, in Romans 6.1, we see the Bible, Paul calling Phoebe a servant in the church. And she's highly recommended by Paul. But uh, again, we don't see anywhere where the Bible indicates that she was a pastor or a church leader teaching men. She was just a servant. And you understand one thing, that uh, the Bible talks about the people who are able to teach, that title, able to teach, is given as a qualification for elders and bishops, but not for servants. Remember that? If you want, we can check, uh, let's, let's just say, check what the Bible says. Uh, in 1 Timothy 3, 1. 1 Timothy 3, verses 1. See what the Bible says. This true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, you see the Bible is saying, if a man, not a woman, a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, not a wife of one husband, vigilant, sober, and of good behavior, given to hospitality, to uh, apt to teach. You know, he's the one who can teach. He's uh, apt to teach. Not given to wine, no streaker, or greed, and filthy lucre, and, and so forth. So, if, if you see this one, and even the Bible continues down there, it says, <clears throat> If a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So it means a woman is not the one who is ruling her house. It is the man who is ruling the house. Are you seeing the difference here? Are you seeing what the Bible is saying? And of course you can go back again and check on Titus 1 verse 6. I, I, I don't have a lot of time to go there. So if we check very well, <clears throat> we check very well concerning this. We've seen that, we've seen that. We, we are here on Phoebe. If we check very well, the structure of 1 Timothy 2.11, like we have read, it clearly tells us the reason why women cannot be pastors. Because it's something concerning on how God created man and woman. Verse 13 of uh, 1 Timothy 11, from, uh, 1 Timothy 2.11-14, verse 13 specifically, it has told us that for, it has started with the word for, giving the cause of Paul's statement. For the woman was deceived, for. So this one means it is the cause, root cause of why he is giving this uh, a command. For it is the woman who was deceived. Because when you look at a marriage, a woman is not above the man. And the man is not, uh, you know, below the woman. Why? Because the man is a representation of, is a representation of Christ and the woman the representation of the church. Let's let's go there and read. Let's see what the Bible says. Ephesians 5:22. Ephesians 5:22. Let's see what the Bible says concerning this. It says, "Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body." Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husband loves your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and he gave himself for, for it. Have you seen this one? Have you now understood why God wants the woman to be, you know, below the man? Because the church can never be above Christ. And we are not saying like uh, men, we are Christ. No, that, that's not our point. We're trying to show because God is a God of plan. And if you don't follow plan and you follow your own emotions and your thoughts, you'll, you will be air, uh, you will err against God. You'll go astray from God's word. So we have to understand that uh, 
deception is one of the reasons why women are told not to teach. And also another reason is because God has set a rule of how a woman and a man should behave in a family. Now let's look on the angle of deception. We have looked on the angle of, you know, man and woman in a marriage. Let's look on the angle of deception. You know, one thing, women have more emotional sensitivity than men. Women are more emotional than men. They, 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 they have a lot of feelings. You see, it's, it's not like men. Men, at times, they are, they are a bit harsh. Somebody was saying some time back that if it was all men in the world, I think we could have all killed each other. But because of women, you will see a guy arguing in the streets and then his wife calls or a girlfriend calls and the guy all of a sudden is like, hey, baby, how are you? You know, and you wonder, is this, is this the same guy who was arguing? making orders and you know cursing people and now a woman calls and uh, you know everything has cooled down because they have that emotional sensitivity that uh, is not given to men that that's a gift that's a gift which men don't have and the same way it will mean that uh, the same emotion it means someone can lie to them so easily because they are they are emotion, uh, emotional. And let me also uh, show you something else as well. Women believe quickly. They believe quickly on things. And they love, you know, th there's this saying which says that women love from what they hear. They love, you see, that, that's, a, that's why a man has to tell nice things to a woman, you know, tell her good things. Uh, if you want to marry a woman, tell her good things, uh, you know, uh, tell her some nice stories, some nice jokes and stuff like that. And you will win her heart because a woman loves from hearing, from what she hears. But men, they love or they believe from what they see. That's why a woman has to, you know, look good, wear some nice uh, makeup and look good for the man. Because a man will not believe from what he will hear. Even if you dress so, even if you talk so beautifully and you don't look nice, the man will definitely not be even interested. Men love from what they see. That's why you'll see a man with a, a lady and you ask, come on, this lady? The way she talks like this, the way she's, she doesn't even have the vibe, but she got the looks. So men love from what they see, and women love from what they hear. So it means women listen more, and if Satan is about to deceive someone between the two, who is he going to deceive first? The woman, because the woman always listens. And that's why Satan was deceiving the woman, because the woman listened more. But the man has to see some facts. He has to see. And also something else you have to understand that is that uh, women also excel so much in hospitality. You know, they are, they are really good in uh, being hospitable to others. In hospitality, they are always good, you know, helping people in different things. That's a, that's, that's a virtual. They are very hospitable. They have so much mercy. They, they love helping and serving in different things. And uh, that's why you'll see in most churches will have some ushers who are women. And women will be serving, you know, if there's a function, women are always organizing, arranging things. Things which uh, a man cannot do. Even at home, I always, uh, sometimes when I go at home and I find maybe my mother is not around, I, I'll always feel, come on, I wish my mom was around because it, the house feels empty because... You see, a woman arranges, she knows where this is, you know, that spoon is there, that cup is there, you know, there's a flower there, there's a, some cake that he left for us. But, but the father will not really understand that. My dad will not really understand those things. He'll just sit at the gazebo and, uh, you know, do his own things. But a mother is more helping, more serving. And that's why a home, a home is for the woman. Because she's very good in arranging things. Unlike men. So, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> so, most ministry depends on women. Now, you may ask, so Keith, what is the conclusion of this matter? What's the conclusion of this matter? You have given us all these stories. Now, the conclusion is this. Women are not restricted from public praying or prophesying. They can pray in public. They can prophesy. 
as it as it as it is written in uh, let me show you in first corinthians the bible tells us about that first corinthians 11 5 11 verse 5 women are not restricted from praying in public and prophesying the bible says but every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head for it is for that is even all one uh, if she was shaven you see the bible is talking about the woman praying and prophesying okay in public that's okay that's that's agreed a woman can you know can uh, uh, prophesy <clears throat> and she can pray in public and also another thing you have to understand is that women they are not restricted from exercising the gifts of the holy spirit they can exercise the gifts of the holy spirit discernment encouraging faithfulness forbearance gentleness you know all those kind of gifts they can do it and it's confirmed by the bible in uh it's confirmed in the bible in first corinthians chapter 12 okay first corinthians 12 i i don't have time to go there uh but let me just show you i don't know is in verse one or is verse verse what but uh, th there's all this if you just go through you will see Exactly what the Bible says concerning this, okay? Uh, men and women, men and women, all, all this chapter, I don't have time to, to go through all this, okay? But you can go and check in First Corinthians from chapter 2, the whole of that. You can be able to see that women are not restricted from exercising the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And also another thing you have to understand is that women are called to minister to others and to demonstrate the fruit of the spirit you are called to minister to others okay the gifts uh, uh the the gifts galatians 5 22 this one you can also check women are also included galatians 5 22 okay galatians 5 22 the, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So the Bible has not discriminated who who uh, should demonstrate the fruit of the spirit. Okay, they are not restricted in anything like that. They are supposed to minister to others and demonstrate that fruit of the spirit. Another thing. We also understand is that they should also proclaim the gospel to the lost people. Women should proclaim the gospel to the lost. This one is uh, written in Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20. You can go and read there. I don't want to make the video so long. To, uh, and also you can check Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and 1 Peter 3.15. They should proclaim the gospel to the lost people. And also women are encouraged to teach other women and children God's word. They are encouraged. In the book of Titus 2, 3 to 5, it says that, let me just read this one. Titus, Titus uh, 2, 3. See what the Bible says. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, and teachers of good things. You see, women teaching good things. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Are you seeing this one? And uh, to be discreet, just, temper, uh, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So the woman should teach other women, okay, teach other women, and encourage also children as well. But now, one thing that the Bible has clearly explained here, and if you have any other angle of uh, this topic that I've not covered, please, you can type it down there on the comments, is that uh, the only thing that uh, I see here God restricting women is having authority over men, and uh, teaching authority in the church which has men. Authority over a group of men and also teaching in the open where there are men. Because that one has been uh, uh, given specifically to men as a command. 
Okay? So it's it's not because men are better. I, I, I don't want women you you start saying, okay, Keith is more of a you know saying that these people are better than others. No. I know in Christ Jesus is no Jew or Gentile, but that's a different thing. This is talking about rules, authorities, who should take where, who should do what. God is a God of order. God is a God of order and is not the author of confusion. So it's not about men being better, no. It's simply about how God designed the church to function. And if you're out there and uh, your church is led by a woman, mm, ask yourself, is it really exactly what the Bible is saying? And if there's something that you, you find probably I've said it wrong, please kindly feel free to comment and uh, correct me on that. And uh, in love, I will come back again and I'll address the same. So, if you're out there and you're still mixed up about this, please read your Bible. The Bible tells us study to be approved unto God. And that's exactly what you're doing here. And if you're not saved, Please, you're saved by the gospel. The gospel is what saves you. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it explains how that Christ laid his life for you. He laid his life down for you so that you can be saved. Through the shedding of his blood, we have been saved. And if you believe that, then you confess it out to the Lord, what you have believed, with your mouth. And you tell him, Jesus, I know you did this for me. You are buried and rose again according to the scriptures. And you tell him that, then you are saved. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope it has edified you in one way or another. I know it's a controversial topic, but uh, please bear with me. I'm only uh, edifying you and opening up what the Bible says. Uh, these are not my words. I'm not uh, against anyone, but I'm only trying to edify what the Bible says so that you can be perfect and cleansed for the good works of Christ. Thank you very much. God bless you. Hope uh, you, you can give the video a thumbs up and also you can share the video so that other people can also be able to uh, learn and uh, understand. Please also, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. I always post new videos, two videos every day teaching on God's word. God bless you and have a blessed time.